So now we're going to be looking at some torque and static equilibrium. Uh, we're actually getting into the rotational motion. And so let's take a look at this one. So two children push on opposite sides of a door during play. Both push horizontally and perpendicular to the door. One child pushes with a with a force 17.5 newtons at a distance 0.6 me meters. So let's say we have a door like this. And I'll make it horizontal. We're looking from the air. Um, and say it's swinging this way. And so one child is pushing this way with 17.5 newtons at a distance of um, 0 0.6 meters. And the second child pushes at a distance of 0 0.5, what, uh, 0 0.45 meters. What force, so it's over here, what force must the second child exert to keep the door from moving? Okay, so the way you want to do this is what I usually do is I calculate the torque, and torque has a direction. Now, in an algebra-based physics class, uh, like AP Physics 1 is, you're simply going to describe direction as clockwise or counterclockwise. And I typically do counterclockwise as the positive direction, and uh, clockwise as negative direction. Although you can switch them around. Like I said, like, like, it, like it is with uh, vector motion, um, xy directions, which way you declare positive is up to you as long as you're consistent. So this force here, the 17.5 newtons, is going to cause a torque from the, at this point of rotation. And the torque is the force times the distance to the point of rotation, to where the force is being applied. So the torque from this one, and this one, th this force, this torque, is causing it to rotate uh, clockwise. So this torque here um, is going to be negative. So it's the, 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 the net torque is going to be negative 17.5 times 0 0.6 and that's because this force is causing a rot would cause if, the, if there wasn't an opposing force it would cause this door to rotate in the counterclock in the clockwise direction this force that the other child is doing is doing a force um, in the uh, that would cause the door to move in the counterclockwise direction so it's a positive torque F times 0 0.45 and the net torque here has to be 0 because it's not rotating at all and so I can say, I can solve for F, it's equal to 17.5 times 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.45. Times 0.6 divided by 0.45, I get 23.3 newtons. So two children of mass 20 kilograms and 30 kilograms sit balanced on a seesaw with the pivot located at the center of the seesaw. Actually, I should draw it straight because they're balanced. Um, if the children are separated by a distance of 3 meters, it means this child here, I've got this child here, this child is 20 kilograms, this child is 30 kilograms, and we're separated by a distance of 30 me 3 meters, what distance from the pivot point is a small child sitting in order to maintain the balance? So let's. So what we don't know. What we don't know is the distance from the point of rotation because the in in when you're doing the torques, the point of rotation. You know, this is the natural point of rotation. Um, we would say this distance is x, and if that distance is x, then this distance has to be three minus x, right? And those are the distances that I need to set up to do the torques. And again, I'm going to use my notation where. Um, positive torque is in the counterclockwise direction, negative torque is in the clockwise direction. Now this guy is causing this whole thing to rotate in the counterclockwise direction, so this guy exerts a force downward, right, which is 20 times g, mg, and this guy exerts a force downward, that's 30g. This force is exerting a torque on the, um, on the seesaw, and the torque here the net torque is this is 20g times x, okay? 20g times x, because uh, because um, the the force the torque the force is already perpendicular to the distance, so you just do this force times this distance here, okay? And it's a positive torque. Now this torque here is negative because it's causing the seesaw to go in the clockwise direction, so we would say minus 30g times 3 minus x. And because this thing is balanced, the net torque must be zero. Okay, so I could actually divide by g, cancel those out, and that would be fine. So I have 20x minus, distribute the 30 minus 90 plus 
30x is equal to 0, or 50x is equal to 90. So x is equal to 9 fifths, which is what, 1.8 meters. Okay, and that's what they wanted, the distance that the small child is from the point of rotation. Person carries a plank of wood two meters long with one hand pushing down on it with at one end with a force F1 and the other hand holding it up. So let me see, carries a plank of wood. I got a plank of wood here. Long hand pushing down at one end with the force F1. And the other hand holding up, holding it up at 0.5 meters from the end of the plank. So kind of like pushing up like here. F2. Um, oh, this is two meters long, so I should draw this to scale a little bit better. Um, one end with force F1, and the other hand holding at 0.5 meters from the end of the plank with F2. If the plank has a mass 20 kilograms, the center of gravity in the middle of the plank, what are the magnitudes of the forces? So what's a little confusing about this one is actually where they're saying it's 0.5 meters from the end. So let's say it's probably here. It's more realistic. So if this thing, whole thing is 2 meters, right? This whole thing is 2 meters. Then this distance here would be 0 0.5 meters. It kind of makes sense that he would be holding it like that. He could be holding it like from this end, but I think it would be kind of kind of weird. So we have to look at all the forces that are acting on it. We have F1, we have F2, and we have force of gravity here. Okay, but when I do, when I do, so so this is, this is everything. Um, what are the magnitudes of these forces? I, you know, what you want to do is you want to pick a point of rotation. There's a couple of ways you can do this, but if I don't want it to, um, I'm holding it. It's not rotating, right? It's not falling over. I'm going to pick this as the point of rotation, the center point. And you don't have to do it that way, but it's the way I would typically do it. Um, um, you can pick the point of rotation anywhere in a statics problem when it's not rotating. So I'm going to do it this way first and kind of show you how it would look. So if I pick the point of rotation as the as the as where the gravity goes in, then I look at each force and I decide how much torque they're contributing. Now, F1 is causing a torque um, in the counterclockwise direction, so that's a positive, so that's F1 times one meter. And then F2 is causing a torque that goes in the uh, clockwise direction, so that's minus F2. And if this whole thing is two meters, and this is the center, this is one meter, this is 0.5 meters, this is uh, 0 0.5 meters from the center here. So this is one meter away, this is 0.5 meters. Now FG uh, doesn't exert a torque, because its distance is zero. I would do plus FG times zero, which would be zero. And so this just simply equals zero. So I'm gonna have F1 plus 0 0.5 F2, oops, minus 0 0.5 F2, minus 0 0.5 F2 is equal to zero. So um, I don't have enough to solve this, so what, what else do I need to know? Well, I do know that the net force has to also be zero because it's not, accelerating up or down in the direct in that direction either so um, the upward force is f2 minus f1 minus fg has to equal zero and i actually know what force of gravity is right so i can solve for say f2 f2 is equal to mg plus f1 i can plug that into here now and i have f1 minus 0 0.5 mg plus f1 is equal to zero and so this is F1 minus, so it's 0 0.5 F1 is equal to uh, 0.5 mg, bring to the other side, 0 0.5 mg. So F1 is equal to mg, and F2, and mg, by the way, is 20 times 9.8. So that's 196. And F2 is half, uh, or is double of F1. So F2 would have to be, because from this equation, F1 is equal to 1 half of F2. So this is 2 times 196, 392 newtons. Okay, so those are the two forces. There's another way you could have done this problem. And I'm going to kind of show you um, down here in like this red color. Is if I instead picked different points of rotation, I could have solved for it just the same. 
So what I could have done instead is I could have picked this as my point of rotation. I'm going to pick the point of rotation here. Okay, and the relevant distances are 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And now I look at each force and I see what torque they're exerting. Well, if I pick this as the point of rotation, this force, the F2 doesn't exert a torque. So I would get F1, um, well, let's do our, our similar positive negative. Right? F1 is causing a um, counterclockwise, so I'd be F1 would be positive torque, F1 times 0 0.5. F2 doesn't exert any torque because it's acting at the point of rotation, and FG is acting at uh, the center of mass of the plank, which is 0 0.5 meters from the point of rotation. But it's causing a, count a clockwise rotation, so that's a negative torque. So if I solve this, F1 is just equal to FG. Because the 0 0.5s will cancel. I could just divide out the 0 0.5s. This is 196 newtons. And then you can do a similar thing for F2, or you could just you know do the net force is zero once I have F1. You could do the same thing from this point of rotation and do net torque, okay? So the net torque, so this is the net torque here, and I could have done the net torque from this as the point of rotation, and I could have said like, well, F2, F1 is not causing a torque because it's acting at the point of rotation. F2 is acting 0.5 meters from it, and it's causing it to go counterclockwise, so that would be F2 times 0 0.5. And then FG is causing it one meter away from the point of rotation, and it's causing it to go uh, clockwise. So it's minus FG times 1. That, because it's 0, because uh, it's not rotating. So I'd have um, FG is equal to 0 0.5 F2, or F2 is equal to 2 FG, which is 2 times 20 times 9.8. So this, what I did in pink here, or this red color, is uh, a different way to do it, where I am picking different points of rotation and just doing that torque. And you can do that as long as it's not actually rotating. Because the point of rotation is somewhat arbitrary in the sense when something's not rotating, it's, there's not really a point of rotation. There's just a particular point that we're going to use as the reference point for the point of rotation, for our torque calculations. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I go through a lot more of these exact kinds of problems with much longer videos uh, on my website. It's entirely free. Check out the link in the description below.